Hello Desert Bearhawk fans. It's been a while since I posted a video and uh, the reason for that is that I've been struggling with these right here. This is the center rib of the wing and this rib sits between the forward spar and the aft spar. Um, there's not nearly as many of these in the wing as there are uh, nose ribs, which we sh I showed you uh, last time we made videos. Um, but they're, they're, the process for forming these ribs is essentially the same. They're clamped in a form block. They're flanged over on the sides here. You can see this one's already done. Um, here is one that is not in the, not in the, uh, the die form right now. But So there's basically what I've done is I've flanged the center ribs so um, to take the airfoil shape. And the next step in the process is to flange these lightning holes and that will give the ribs some compression and torsional stability by putting these flanges in here. Um, so that's what I've been working on for the last several days and i been quite frustrated with it because when I, after I flange the holes, when I take the rib out of the form, the rib is just completely tweaked in every direction imaginable. And uh, obviously it's not going to be suitable for building a straight wing. Um, now everyone's level of tolerance is, is different. I tend to be anal retentive and want things to be perfect. And uh, that's why building a house would never be good for me, but building an airplane is probably a good application of that. Of that uh, personal trait of wanting things to be straight and perfect. Um, so anyways, I wanted to show you how I straighten this rib back out after I pull it out of the, the blocks here. And I haven't even pulled out. This came right from the flanging dies we're in here. Flanged the, uh, all the flanges on the circles, on the lightning holes. And now I, I need to um, show you, or I'm going to show you, how I straighten this rib out. And, I, and I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to get it 100% straight. Um, you'd have to be a metal master to do that, I think. I don't even know if you could. Uh, working with tools, I suppose you could, but the, there comes a point where it's just diminishing returns. Um, once the rib is assembled, it will have vertical stringers riveted into the rib in, in between each lightning hole and then one at the leading and trailing edge to attach it to the spar. So all that will be assisting and also holding this rib straight. But I want to try to get the rib as straight as I can before I do that so I induce the least amount of stress into it by forcing it into shape. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one right out of the right out of the um, form blocks right here on live pre-recorded TV so you can see how they come out. And um, the way this works is I kind of dual purpose the form block. This was also a, a form that I used to cut the actual rib blank and then I oversized these holes by three quarters to give me the, the ability to uh, center locate the die to push it onto this blank which um, sets the 45 in there. So I kind of repurposed some tools. Um, the only reason I did that was is I was I was uh, running out of MDF to use and I was running out of places to store all the tools that I've been making all along and uh, so I figured what the heck I'll, I'll get two for one and if I have to make another rib blank I can always use a different set of external forms to get that because they're basically all the same. Well they are all the same. So here's our rib, here's our form. I'll pull the form off the tooling pins and you can see already, hopefully you can see, that this thing is tweaked out. You can see it's tweaked. Hopefully you're getting that. I can't watch the monitor on the camera. Well, maybe, you know, maybe I can't. Well, I don't know. Can't watch the monitor per se, but you can see that it's fairly bowed, potato chipped up. It's also got a twist this way, like so. You can see me twist it out one way or another. But it's basically pretty jinky right now. Not what, not what I want to go on my airplane. So, I needed to come up with a way to straighten it out. And I thought about and thought about and thought about it. And so the first thing I did is I defaulted to the Bearhawk 
users group online and I threw my question out and I got a lot of good answers and uh, so I started trying some of the techniques and the first technique I got was I was told to build a form that would support this rib off the table where I could come in with a push stick kind of something like this and you can see I I made one I did it and then you push on this area right here of the rib basically stretching this and when you stretch this it forces the center of the rib up when this is because you're making this longer so it has to go somewhere and, the, and that result is the rib bows back the other direction so I tried that and it you know it was a lot of hard work a lot of hard pushing I couldn't quite hold it right I was starting to get weird looking shapes in the holes it, admittedly it worked to a degree but not not in the manner of fashion that I felt was satisfactory and it certainly wasn't in the manner of fashion that would be expeditious to finish 22 of these ribs so that goes out the window so I do a little more reading a little a little more investigating online and another fellow says he got some dural and rod and he held this in his lap and he took this and he kind of worked it back and forth and you know each rib took so many minutes and you can see that I tried that as well and it just was I got decent results but it was difficult to to do this process and it was just physical hard labor you're just using a lot of force and you can see this isn't dural and this is PVC solid PVC uh, rod but still you can see where it's all tore up and just wasn't a good time so I, I'm sitting around I'm talking to a couple of my friends who are in aviation as well and we thought well why can't we flute these holes like we flute the edges here to shrink the material out you know take your fluting pliers like these stick them in there and start fluting these holes until you shrink out enough material to work that bow back out and I thought, well, I don't know why we can't do that. Um, it seems like it's reasonable for the edges. Why wouldn't it be reasonable here? So again, I posted it back to the Bear Hawk groups. And uh, the response was immediate and wasn't positive. Um, the long and the short of it is, is that don't do that. And um, lots of guys like to throw, a lot, throw, you know, there's guys out there that throw a lot of technical jargon at you, you know, bend radiuses and shrinkage and compression loads and, formulas and yeah whatever but uh, at the end of the day one of the fellas made a post and the post was right to the point accurate and pretty much covered the material that we needed to cover which was when you flute something you're shrinking it and we actually need to stretch so fluting this would only make this problem worse not better ding 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 we got a winner so fluting pliers are out so not feeling really super great about my project and these pretzelized wing ribs I'm thinking to myself how in the heck can I get this thing straight without going through the uh, you know the uh, you know try to push them straight and it occurred to me well if I need to stretch it why don't I just stretch it so I grabbed my pliers that I made now this is another two dollar pair of pliers from Harbor Freight and all I did was grind off the serrations in here made a couple of soft jaws out of pieces of aluminum and then taped them in place and I what I use these pliers for is when I'm flanging the edge of a rib if I over flute it and I need to take a flute out I just put the flute in the pliers and I squeeze and it smashes the flute flat thereby removing it and expanding the metal as opposed to shrinking it so I thought why can't I take my fluting plier or my uh, my anti fluting pliers if you will and uh, stretch some of this material here so I thought, let's give that a shot. And you can see, you can see here, let me grab something, uh, something that will illustrate. You can see that this thing has a, a bow in it because I, I can move that pencil right underneath. That's how much of a bow it has in it. Now, can I push it flat? Yeah, I can, I can force that flat where I can't get underneath there. But now I'm inducing a lot of stress into the part. And uh, it's going to make it hard to rivet it together. It's going to make it difficult um, to get it to align, and like I said, I'm not a, I'm not an engineer, a metallurgist, or anything, but I'm sure that those stresses are probably not good to have induced in your wing. So I want to get that bow out of there. And the way I did it was the way I came up with doing it, and it seems so simple. I can't believe it took four days of thinking about it. But I just take these 
anti-fluting pliers for sake of a better term or just some soft jaw pliers and I'm just going to get in here get on that flange and I'm just going to give it a tweak just like that and tweak it tweak it and you can see when I tweak you can see that flange or this uh, this bow coming out so I just give it a, and I mean not much just a little skosh back and forth all the way around and I just continue to do that on each one of these flange holes here and I gotta go back and forth probably 20 times on each one and I do it a little at a time. You don't want to try to do it all at once because you'll overdo it in one spot and start bending, kinking, screwing things up. So just kind of slowly and I hope that I hope that this is in the field of view of the camera because I can't see what you're watching. I'll have to review this video and then if I if I'm wrong, I'll be making another one and everything I said will be just a waste of time. But anyways, you can see now, just after a little bit of doing what I'm doing, you can already see I'm starting to get flat here. And I just come along and continue to work it up. And it's, you know, it's repetitive, but it's not, it doesn't require a ton of pushing and strength and how do I hold on to it and fixtures to hold it. I'm just doing it flat on the table, a little at a time, all the way around. And um, I'm slowly working out. You can see now that's almost flat right there, where before it was bent up. So again, I'm going to come the other way now with this one. Go through here a little bit. Come across here. And uh, yeah, is the is the flange on this hole a little distorted? It is. It has to be because you're shrinking the material. But that little bit of distortion is a small price to pay for a flat rib with good strength in a lightweight. So all these guys online with their bend radiuses and their push tools and their bob sticks and they're sitting them in these fixtures and all this stuff that these guys are doing it's just overthinking the problem and you know I've been called the over engineer -er, er because I have a tendency to overthink problems too and I'm trying my best to break that habit on this airplane because I want to fly it sometime before the earth explodes and if I over engineer everything I'll never get the airplane done and to me I'm just surprised at how absolutely ridiculously simple this is and yet you know 1298 other guys building this airplane as of my plans never thought of it and I just I don't know as you can see now just keep working this back and forth I would have my own cooking show or something it's kinda of like the same thing keep working this back and forth and uh, I'm slowly but surely flattening this rib out and I'm just gonna keep on doing this And if I go long I'll edit the video for time but I want you to see it start to finish in real time or real recorded time how this is working out and like I say it's sometimes I make it hard on myself by working cross arm there can see that if I just work these flanges around nice and slow, you don't want to reef on them because you'll tear it, you'll kink it, whatever. You don't want any kinks. Kinks are bad. If we're not talking rock and roll band, kinks are bad. And uh, you definitely don't want any kinks on your airplane, although if I ever get a chance to fly around the kinks in my airplane, that'd be kind of cool. Nonetheless, kinks are bad. Any kind of stress point. So now, Again, now the rib is a little, it is a little tweaked this way a little bit, but as you can see now, just laying it flat, I'm going to try this pencil again. I can even, I'm going to try this one. I, get, I can't even really get it underneath it. You can see, I have to, if I hold this flat, you know, and I'm just, I'm not holding it flat, but just holding it down so it can't move. I can't even get the pencil underneath there anymore. So I've, just in a few minutes of talking with you, I've, successfully worked out 
probably 95% of the little bow in this thing. And if I if I stay on this even further, I am certain that I can get this rib perfectly flat. And uh, again, there becomes a point of diminishing returns. But if you look, you can see. I don't, well, maybe you can. It might be tough in the camera, but you know, the, you can see the stretch starts from right about here, and it's stretched, and then it kind of goes back to its shape there. So I'm stretching this material out, and now this rib, where it was really tweaked before, and I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, but trust me, this thing is 1,000% better than when I pulled it out of the mold or out of the form blocks. And again, you can still see there's a little bit of room for me to work. Every time I do that, you can see this web in between. It starts to move down towards flat. And I think, I think what I'm learning here is what people 100 years ago knew. You know, your blacksmiths and your, your tin workers back in the 40s and guys building airplanes in World War II by hand. I mean... This is child's play for them, but it's a lost art, I think. And even now, when you buy home-built kits, a lot of the kits come with these ribs just stamped out. And the and the builder, yeah, he's got to line up the the vertical and drill the holes and rivet it all together. And but a lot of the kits don't require the builder to actually, you know, make a kit before he builds an airplane. And with a scratch-built airplane such as this, I think that. Um, you know, guys struggle, which is why there's a lot of posts about this online, a lot of people talking about it. So, plus I think I've come up with a tool idea. I got to talk to Cleveland Tools. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can make a tool that's got, you know, a half moon Duralin cup on either side. Duralin won't scratch this aluminum, and rather than me focusing all the pressure on on the straight 90 degree jaws, I can have kind of a half moon that helps focus the pressure more in a spread out manner following the curve in this way um, you know you, you even take less of a chance of putting a kink or a dent in what you're doing anyways there you are Bearhawk fans it's a center rib it's basically flanged um, if you're wondering what this garp is on here it's wax from from the uh, flanging dies I wax the dies so they slide across the aluminum without stretching it or shrinking it. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary or not, but it only takes a second and doesn't hurt anything, so I do it. And you can see now, although the rib is not 100% flat, all it takes is just, just moderate finger pressure to hold that thing down flat. And I just don't think that that stress there is going to be anything to be concerned about when the aircraft is uh, being assembled and goes into service. So there you have it. The uh, anti-flare or the anti-flute pliers will have to come up with a better name. Feel free to offer your suggestions. And a flanged center rib that doesn't have any bows in it. So to the next video, I hope you enjoyed. Leave some comments. Love to hear what you have to say and see you again from the shop.